Hello everyone, my name is Sam Spade and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals and GML tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to briefly go over the call stack. So the call stack is a stack that keeps track of the various information about the active subroutines in the program. Essentially, it tells you where you are and where you'll go next. And a basic understanding of it, which is all I really have, will go a long way. So if you don't know what a stack is, I have a tutorial on it, but essentially it is a last in, first out structure. You can think of a stack of boxes or plates where let's say this is our existing data in the stack, you push data on, which means you add it to the stack, push data on, so now we've got three, and you pop data off, pop data off. In GML, the call stack that is at least disclosed to us, I don't know how it works on the back end, but the call stack that is disclosed to us creates a new layer uh, for every event or script. And, and this is the important thing, each layer always returns to the layer that created it. So if you have a script, which calls a script, which calls a script, that final script doesn't return to the initial event. It returns to the script that called it, which returns to the script that called it, which returns to the initial event. Each layer has its own local scope, and each layer always remembers where it was at. So if you call a script in the middle of an event or another script, when that script finishes, it will return and remember where it was at in that event or script. And we'll see some examples of this. So as we've said a couple of times, virtually all code runs inside of events. So you have some instance event that is running. That instance event has its own local scope. This is where all the variables created by the keyword var go. Now let's say that event calls a script. That script is pushed onto the stack and it gets its own local scope. If it calls a script, that script gets pushed onto the stack and it has its own local scope. And once these scripts start finishing, they get popped off in the same order. So then this would get popped and it would get popped and you'd return to the same instance event. So let's switch over to GameMaker Studio 2 and see some examples. Okay, so let me just go over this object quickly before we start. You'll notice that it has a create event and a couple user events, and there are also a couple scripts over here that we'll use. So the create event just creates a local variable, an instance variable, a global variable, and then calls event user 0, which is over here. Then it calls a script, call event, and passes in the argument 1, which will in turn call event user 1, which will call event with event zero, and all of these will then return and will be done. Seems complicated, but we'll walk through it and you'll see that it's actually quite straightforward. Okay, so we've stopped at our breakpoint. And one thing that I wanna do here, first I can increase the size a little bit, but one thing that I wanna do here is switch over here to resource view. And here we can actually see the call stack. So the bottom level of our stack is the create zero, which is the basic create event for an object. So we're going to show debug message down here and we'll actually just have the output event, create event shown down here. We're going to create a couple variables. So we have created a global variable, an instance variable, and a local variable. And now we're going to go into event user zero. Since we've called another event, we've added a layer to our call stack, other one zero. So we show a debug message, then we create another local variable, 200, Notice that we have our instance variable right here. That's 100. We're going to change that to 200. And of course, we're changing our global variable. We'll change our global variable to 200. We're going to end that event. And now watch over here. As we come out, we're going to go back to create event. So it gets popped off and we return to the create event. Now we're going to go through a slightly longer chain. So we have call event, which is a function, passing in argument one, but it calls its own script. So we have our script call event, but now we have print hello world. This just prints hello world, and it's gonna pop off. We're gonna to return to that layer. So popped off, we're back here. Note that argument zero, still there, hasn't been overwritten. We're gonna come in, we're gonna call event user zero, show event user one, sorry, call event user one, show event user one, set a local variable, 300, and now we want to start paying attention to these local variables. So this local variable is going to be 300. Note that the instance variable is going to change. The global variable is going to change. Now we're going to call event zero. And notice how this is starting, uh, notice how our stack is starting to increase in size. So here you go. We've got call event. And now we have another layer of call event. And another layer of print hello world. So now we've called event zero. So we're going to call event zero. Notice local variable is going to be 200. 
local variable 200, 300, 300. These are going to get changed back to 200. And now we're going to start popping everything off of this stack. We return to this one. Note that it remembers where we are. We return to this one. And note that here, a local variable is still 300. Because we set it to 300 up here, and as we mentioned in our slides, each layer has its own local scope. And that local scope is remembered. So as we go up, we set a local variable, we set a local variable. These local variables don't override each other because they're in their own scope. So when this script finishes and pops off, we come back here and it remembers all of its local variables. Note that this is not how instance variables or global variables work. When you set an instance or global variable, whether it's in the instance or a script called from that instance, it's gonna change that variable for the instance and of course for the global variable for anyone else in that scope. So as we continue to pop off of the stack, this one's gonna get removed. There we go, it's gone. This one's gonna get removed, it's gone, and our initial local variable of 100 is still 100. And then finally, all of our tests are complete. So I know that's a very quick and brief overview of the call stack, but hopefully it will help you understand a little bit more about how local variables work and about how to debug your code, as when you get error messages, and we talked about this in the error message tutorial, it's gonna show you the call stack, how you got to that place in the code where you have a problem. And this is really important with things like scripts or if you're calling events from other events because you need to know which object or which instance of an object started it. What instance variables is it working with? And so on. In summary, the call stack tracks important information for each active subroutine. Events and scripts always create another layer or another subroutine. And each layer always remembers and returns to the one that created it. Each layer also has its own local scope. And understanding this gives you a lot more power when you're working with your code and debugging your code. As always, the links in this slide, along with links to the slides themselves and the source code, will be below. And that's it. Thanks for watching.